All right, pen friends, I want to talk to you today about a pen I ordered off of eBay. It is the Kim ACR. It is a huge pen in this beautiful green rippled ebonite with a touch of brown running through it. Um, it's got this awesome wide clip and things. Well, let's talk about how it came to me. I ordered it on eBay and it came to me shipped from India. It came quite quickly. Um, and it came to me here in the United States from Saji Kumar. And from what I understand, he has now started his own pen line and pen company uh, for sale. You know, where you can buy. Uh, so he's got a website and all that um, in India, and you can order pens from him. And it's called KiwiPen.com. And there's this handwritten note that came with it, which is pretty awesome. Uh, it says, thanks for the purchase. I am a fountain pen collector and enthusiast. If you have any query regarding this pen, please feel free to contact me. This pen package contains the following. Now, I only paid for the Kim ACR, handmade ebonite fountain pen, um, double. And I'll talk about that in a moment. It says jumbo double. That's why it was an interesting uh, pen and why I bought it. Uh, but also, he sent along with it spare nibs compatible for each side of the pen. Uh, a velvet pen, two velvet pen pouches, or is it just, I think, I think two. I can't remember. This is one of them. Oh, yeah, the other one was red. Um, an eyedropper to fill the ink, and a click bamboo pen as well something you know and all those other things i didn't order i just ordered this this large pen and all these other things they threw in with it which was pretty amazing it wasn't that expensive a pen it was just very nice of him to include a handwritten note and uh all the other goodies that came along with it so without further ado here's the pen now uh this clip i think is uh, is fabulous it looks like it's handmade uh like pounded out of, of polished stainless uh, it's got these perforations at the top here and i don't know if they're there for other other than for looks but maybe it gives a little more spring to this clip so you can you can actually clip it onto something because otherwise this would be really stiff and it is still fairly stiff but with the bends in it and that it it works quite well like i said it's a large piece of ebonite and one of the things I really like about this pen is how all of the ripples kind of line up. Um, it's actually screwed on a little tight. So when you screw it on snug, they kind of line up with each other, even on the cap, which is really rare. But the, the blind cap down here mates up really well. Um, one of the things I found really extraordinary, extraordinarily interesting about this pen, um, it, besides the fact that it, it takes just a little over one turn to open the cap, um, is the fact that it's got three start threads in here. Most of my Indian pens, in fact, all of my Indian pens, uh, have single start threads, and sometimes you have to twist them up to four times to get the caps off. But this one is triple start threads, which is, you know, technically interesting. Uh, you can, as you can see, it is a very large, girthy pen, um, a big, fat ebonite section. Now, you will have noticed the little bit of white stuff in there, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, I know that the maker will probably be unhappy with what I have to say about that, but um, let's go down to what make, kind of makes this pen special besides its size um, is this. You unscrew the blind cap, single start threads, and you have to spin that one about three times to get it off. There's another nib. Like, what? Take off the main cap. There you go. Two nibs. What is going on there? Well, what you've got is uh, a double barrel, I mean, a double reservoir eyedropper. And the first one, uh, the reservoir comes down to about here. This bottom one, it comes up to about here. I think it's about right there that you, the union is. Um, and it's kind of cool. I mean, that way you can carry two colors of ink. And for me, I've put, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Krishna um, Jungle Volcano in here, which you know is a great kind of highlighter kind of ink. Um, and actually that nib writes really well. I haven't had any issues with it at all, except for the Krishna ink doesn't flow very well, but that's regardless of the pen. But I have to do have to say, and this is where the, you know, the problem kind of comes in is that the nib that this came with, um, was not very good. The tipping on it, um, it didn't seem to matter what I did. I tried to smooth it. I used some micro mesh. I flossed it and things like that. And it just it just really never got really, really good. I mean, the, the nib wasn't terribly well aligned when I got it, but it didn't take much to line up the, the 
the, the tines and everything and all the things that I normally do to make a pen very, very smooth and, and easy to write with didn't seem to work with this. So I pulled out a high power loop and I looked and the problem was is that the tipping had a big flaw in it, which I've never seen before. There was like a crack running through it although it wasn't really a crack. I think it was like a, a, a casting flaw or something like that. And so it didn't matter what I did. I, there was no smoothing that was going to make that nib write properly. So I yanked it out. And as you can see, I put in here, a, just to test it, I threw in a Jin Hao. This Jin Hao is an interesting nib because, I don't know if you can see that, but um, it's been ground to a medium architect um, so that it's, it's uh, thin this way and broad and anyway so it makes it makes thin downstrokes and broad side strokes anyway uh, it, it because it's so small it's hard to tell the difference but it is a very smooth nib and, and i thought it would be interesting to put it in there but once i put it in there i couldn't get it to seal up it gets kept leaking ink out the sides and what i'm talking about isn't i haven't wrote this pen for almost three weeks so if it writes at all it'll be pretty amazing oh look at that right away that tells you that the you know the ebonite and everything working in here works really really well. Um, so you have a section which, if you look straight down at a section, you see this. And the, you know, let's imagine this is a straight line. When you put the feed in there, the ebonite feed right here is of a slightly smaller diameter than the rest of the the section because there's room in there for the nib to fit in this space here. But what happens is when you stick the nib in there, the nib fills up everything except for like a little piece there and a little piece here. So that there's, there, it's open to the air in these two corners of where the nib fits down with the, the, the section, with the feed into there. And the, this one, so there's a, you know the way of getting around that is is that let's imagine this is the a cross section of a section and um if you see the feed coming down through it um and then it's got its own little little cuts out on, on it and there's a and this is the hole that goes all the way through the section what'll happen is is that the 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 nib coming down into here, um, right here there'll be air gaps right between the nib and the feed, but it'll seal up better down here if the feed is long enough. It'll fill, it'll seal up along inside the hole of the section. Uh, I, my drawings are terrible right now, but I think maybe that gives you a little bit of an idea of what's going on. But the problem was is that this feed is too short. When I put the nib and the feed together, this let's say this is the feed. And, you know, my drawing's usually better, but I, I can't see around my camera very well. Um, the nib rides on it all the way down to here before it comes up um, like that. And there's not enough space here to seal up on the inside of the section. And so... I couldn't get this pen to seal up properly. I don't know how they did it originally from the factory, um, but what I did is I wrapped a little Teflon around the, uh, the the feed and the nib, and that has worked really, 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 really well, better than I imagined possible. I was thinking that I was going to have to try and find um, longer longer uh, feeds so that it would actually seal up on the inside of the section, but this Teflon has actually done a great job. and. As you saw, I picked this thing up and I wrote with it. And I am not kidding. I have not written with this pen for probably two weeks. And I picked it up and it wrote immediately. Um, for an Indian pen with a, you know, with the breather holes, which they always bore, you know, up near the 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 the, the nib, nib and stuff that they always bore in these, that's fabulous. So even though it looks goofy with that little bit of white there, and it was kind of sad that the the nib that it came with wasn't all that good. It's now a fabulous writer. I mean, it just it goes and goes and goes and goes. And um, as you can see, this this is the fine downstroke with that architect nib, and then slightly broader side strokes. Anyway, um, this is a really great pen, and it was worth every penny. And I don't mind tinkering with my pens. Um, and I don't know that anybody else will have the problems I had with mine. Uh, it could be very well be that the mine was the the one uh, one fluke pen out there that just had a little bit of an issue, um, but it is it still to me was worth the money. Um, 
and it wasn't all that much. Uh, and especially that it came along with, it had a couple of pouches like this, and there was an eyedropper. The eyedropper's still in here. I can feel it in there. It's just one of these cheapy plastic ones. Um, they work. They do the job. They'll suck up ink and drop it in there. Um, and the click pen that it came with, I think I... Where'd I stuff that? Oh, it's over here. Now, the Click Bamboo is an inexpensive pen. You know, I might as well pull some pens out so you can get kind of a comparison of the size of this thing. Um, so, it's got a, a fresh slate here and, and get rid of my hideous drawings. Um, so this is the Kim ACR double-ended jumbo pen. Um, this is a Monteverde Regatta, which is by no means a small pen. Uh, here's a Visconti Homo Sapiens, which is a large pen. Um, it's still bigger. Um, one of my other large pens would be this Opus 88 Coloro. Look at that. It dwarfs the Coloro Demonstrator. Uh, a pen that people might have more commonly that they can compare this to. Let's find one here. Well, let's look at a Neponset, which is also an Indian-made pen. In the, in the Neponset, it's known as a large size pen. But look at that. It dwarfs the Neponset. Uh, how about a Lamy 2000? If I can get it out of there. Yeah. So you, you see it's a big pen, a big fat pen. Uh, it's even fatter than the Coloro. Um, but it's fun to write with. It's light like Ebonite always is. Um, the click pen that it came with that I was mentioning is this right here. It's called the Click Bamboo. I had another one of these. The cap on mine was green with a demonstrator barrel, um, but it was a weird pen in that just like this Kim ACR that I had issues with is that it would not seal up between this gap between the nib and the, and the feed and ink would just pour out the sides. I could actually take the section off and I could see air through it uh, on each side of the nib there. And I don't know if this one has that issue or not, but let's just see if I, you know, if I could show something that's... Yeah, see, you see how long this feed is? It comes all the way through the section like that. That's what all of these Indian eyedroppers should have. That way there's a place for it to seal up at the bottom here, even if it doesn't seal up here by the nib. The other click pen I had did not seal up there. I think the feed on it was too short. Um, the other thing these click pens have a ten tendency to leak through is actually where the clip goes through. This is a new clip design. There used to be a big gap between the clip and, and whatever else is going on inside there. And, and my mine was so bad, I would fill it up with ink, and I would turn it like this, and I could just watch ink start pouring out through the clip hole. This one I haven't used yet, but I doubt it's going to have that problem. I think this one's a much better pen, and I'm grateful to, uh, what's his name, Saji, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that pro improperly, uh, I'm grateful to him for sending this to me, and I'm, go I'm happy to try this pen out and see how well it works. I have had a history with uh, Indian eyedropper pens in that most of them work very well for me. In fact, I have a couple that are some of the best writers I've ever owned, and this one is seeming to be right up in there, in that league. It is a great writing pen, it, it, and, it, and it performs better than more expensive eyedroppers that I own. Um, anyway, take a chance, check out kiwipens.com and see what things you can see there. Uh, I think those things are pretty, you know, they, they make some pretty awesome pens in India if you're into handmade pens and you don't mind tinkering with them a little bit. Um, and I, I am sure that given the, the care and, uh, the customer service, um, ethos that, uh, Saji has, uh, that he'll take care of you regardless. And I have absolutely no connection with him. I've just purchased a pen from him and received a package from him. I am not expecting, nor have I been given any sort of promotion. I have not, you know, nothing, none of this came to me for free. Um, well, unless you consider the things he threw in the, in, in the package is free. But uh, there's no understanding between Saji and I or any other pen maker in the world, frankly. Um, but... Uh, Take a chance on Indian pens, like I've said before, and really take a chance on these ones. Check out Kiwi Pens and see if you can get yourself another nice, large Kim ACR pen. Thanks. Have a good day.